and he was also a very big man. He was the court physician of the Mysore Maharaja, who is supposed to have taught the Mysore Maharaja music. Okay. Beyond this, our today's anchor Mahdi will take you on. And thanks for all the performers who have come here and the parents who have brought them here. Thank you. Uh, I cordially invite and welcome all of you to today's program on celebration of uh, Sri Muttaya Bhagavatar. So as soon as we hear the name Carnatic music, the first set of people that come to our mind is the Trinity, right? So the Trinity as in Tyagaraja Bhagavadar, Muttaswami Dikshidar and Shyama Sastri. So there's yet another performer who is like kind of very distinguished. And he's got a lot of his compositions which are very outstanding and unique. So he is another and he has enriched the Carnatic music after the Trinity, and his name is Dr. L. Mutaya Bhagavadar. Before we actually indulge into his biography, let's just get soaked in one of his beautiful musical pieces, which is going to be performed by one of our youngest singers today. She's the youngest. <laughs> She's my daughter, uh, so I invite Dhriti onto the stage to sing Himagiri Dhani on Suddha Danyasi Raga. So he was born to Lingam Mayer and Anandam 
on November 15, 1877, but uh, he lost his father at a very young age of six years. So post which he actually came under the tutelage of his maternal uncle, Yam Lakshmana Suri, after which he began his uh, journey and powerful bond with music. When he went in search of music and guru, probably at the age of 10 years, then he uh, got to uh, find uh, Samba Shiva Ayer, he became his disciple, who was in the direct Shishya Parampara of Dyagaraja. So, Samba Shiva Ayer and his son T.S. Sadashiva, Sabesha Ayer, sorry, not only taught him different types of Geetams, Varnams and Keetanas, but also Prabhanams of Venkatamaki. So, Muttaya Bhagavadar uh, then returned to Harikesana Loop, probably in 1893 and lived there for three years. So, it is said that he used to wake up at dawn, probably 3.30 a.m. every day with the accompaniment of Tambura, he used to practice his Akarams. So, uh, now we understand how he has reached stardom, right? So, before we understand further about him, let me invite students of Shruti Sriram, Shravan Sriram and Nityashri Tiruloga Chandar to perform Gam Ganapati in the Ragam Hamsidvani. <laughs> Oh. 
for him in 1897. So the Maharaja was so impressed with Muthaya Bhagavad's singing that he made him the Astana Vidwan of Travancore Court. And his status in a friend ranking musician became established after that. Okay, so we get to know more of him as it is coming. So let's invite Lalita and Laya. Over to you. The stage is all yours. Neelie, who is uncontrollable by anybody, it's about Kali. And I was wondering because it's one of the very few songs of Mutai Bhagavad in Tamil. And one day when I was talking to one of the earlier Nathaswaram Vidwans here, who was from Harikesh Nallur, he told me there's a small temple for Neelie, which is the village goddess in Harikesh Nallur. So I suggested it to Lalita that she dances for this because nobody ever sings or dances for it. And I'm thankful to her for taking the offer. Thank you, Lalita. Thank you.
that was a very graceful performance. The mother-daughter duo rocked it, isn't it? So before we move on to the next performance, uh, let us get to know a little bit more of Harikeshan Alur. So it is believed that the person needs yoga, which is luck, and yogya tai, which is merit to be successful in life. So Muttaya Bhagavad had an abundance of both. So he loved good things in life. He always wanted to live like a king. So he loved to dress up grandly and combined with his regal personality led him to distinction. Even on normal days, he would wear dresses with a golden lace. So he would not wear a dhoti more than once. And even his kumkum or the vermilion mark would be a combination of argaja and other scented substances. So he would spray a liberal quality of the finest attar, a kind of perfume, on his dresses. His vetale petti, a box of beetle leaves, was like a small suitcase and it contained the finest spices, not somewhere from India, but he had imported and the cloud came from Burma, it seems. So the wood for the sipla was made of a special sandalwood from Mysore. Probably the king would have gifted him, right? Okay, so let's, before understanding further, let's move on to the next performance. It is going to be from my side. So I'm going to sing uh, Jalantara of Ragam uh, Valaji. So, yeah.
That's what we enjoyed right now. Madhuri Mani Ayer was one of the star disciples and we enjoyed his uh, English composition, English notes. So the, he was the first principal of Swati Tirunal Academy of Music which started in Trivandrum in 1939. He also has more accolades to his uh, cap. Uh, he authored a Sanskrit poetic work called Tyagaraja Vijay Kavya. So Maharaja Krishna Rajendra Odeyar also adorned him with the title Gayaka Sikamani. It has a slight backstory about it, which about which I'll be talking after this performance. Over to you, Tari.
uh, ragam niroshta. Um, there's a there's a story behind this ragam, so it's credited with uh, the discovery of the ragam niroshta is credited is credited with Muttaya Bhagavata, and it's told that the king of Mysore had a bee sting on his lip and therefore couldn't close his mouth when he tried to sing. So Muttaya Bhagavata invented a ragam in which you don't need to close your mouth. So this ragam doesn't use the notes ma or pa. So the arohana and avarohana note and you'll find in the song as well uh, your mouth doesn't have to be closed in order to sing it. So uh, yeah, that's, that's just an interesting fact slash tip. composed this song in Nirosha Ragam. Like she had already mentioned, it's the only Ragam where 
there's no power ma and the lips do not have to touch each other when sung uh, when sung in that ragam even the sahityam of the ragam is like that so he sang this song in front of the chamundeshwari temple in mysore his faith and blessings of the deity is set to cure the king so then the king came over and challenged mutaya bhagwadar again to compose 100 songs in one night and he was able to deliver that as well that's how the chamundamba ashtotra kirtanas came into being so it is also said that in 1934 he had written songs for a movie called lavakusha so it had around 63 songs so the movie's title itself was changed to sangeeta lavakusha so that's one of them so moving on the next performer is anjana i think we've been waiting for earlier so she's here now anjana is going to sing sudamai sudanidhi of ragam suddha danyasi over to you of amrita vashni sorry
performance. I think uh, that was the last performance of the day. So let's just close with some of the important highlights of Mutaya Bhagwadar. He has to his credit almost 400 compositions, the largest among the post-Trinity composers. That included many type of varnams as well as kritis and talanas. The songs were also on a number of Hindu pantheon and patterns. He composed them in four languages: Telugu, Tamil, Sanskrit, and Kannada. Some of the ragams that owe their existence today to the great composer. We had listened to one of them, Niroshta. There are other as well: Vijay Saraswati, Karna Ranjani, Buddha Manohari. And also he composed song for which the Sahitya is also based on the same concept, that is Niroshta. He also popularized Shanmukha Priya and Mohana Kalyani. He introduced many Hindustani ragas, for example, Soini, which is Hamsa Nandi in Carnatic, and Saar and Malhar, and created approximately 20 ragas of his own. So his songs were popularized by his disciples Madurai Mani Ayer and Shankar Shivam, uh, guru of Pop, famous popular art, artist Shri T. and Sesha Gopalan. So he was adept in playing Chitraveena and Vridangam as well. So Muttaya Bhagavad's legacy of music lives on his granddaughter, Veena expert Srimati Rukmani Gopalakrishnan. So with this, we come to the end of today's wonderful performances. So over to the Motuki Panti.